Hello and welcome to this Fant Plant Protection Equipment Walkaround video. I am Maurice Gerkens and I will be presenting this machine to you today. A plant protection sprayer is one of the most important machines on the farm. From planting to harvesting, this machine ensures top quality and the biggest yields. With the experience of the Echo Group, accumulated over 55 years, we can offer you top quality machines and today we would like to present the Rogator 300 series to you. The Rogator 300 series comes in four models, starting with the 333, then the 344, 355 and this machine here, the 366. The last two digits in the name indicate the nominal tank size. This start from 3,300 liters, 4,400 liters, 5,500 liters and the largest with 6,600 liters. All four models always come as standard with a 400-liter clean water tank on the front. This also ensures good weight transfer so that the tractor has good traction even in difficult conditions. There is also an integrated ladder providing easy access to the tank. On the back of the machine there is an additional clean water tank with a capacity of 500 liters. This is available as an option on the 344 and is standard on the 355 and 366. In total, then, this supplies 900 liter clean water when added to the 400 liter in the fresh water tank on the front. The sprayer is fitted onto a single beam chassis and that is beneficial for several reasons. One of the biggest advantages lies in the low center of gravity. In addition, the underside has a ground clearance of 85 cm. Stainless steel panels ensure that no hoses or cables protrude, therefore preventing damage to the crop from these parts. The stainless steel panels are also resistant to rust and spray product. The sprayer is coupled to the tractor via this drawbar. This drawbar provides a number of options. It is height adjustable so that the machine can be connected fully horizontal to the tractor with large as well as small tires. The drawbar here is fitted for lower tractor connection. If it's turned through 180 degrees, the sprayer can also be connected using the top connection to the tractor. That means the sprayer can be adapted to the needs of the customer through use of one single part. The sprayer is driven via load sensing, that means constant oil flow for 60 liters a minute. If the tractor cannot supply a flow of 60 liters a minute, a load sensing pump can be integrated into the drawbar. This is driven by a PTO. This gives you a PTO-driven hydraulic-driven sprayer which combines all the benefits of a load sensing system on the tractor. The sprayer is operated via Isabus. This plug is connected to the tractor to give me full control of the sprayer via the tractor's own terminal. As the sprayer is always Isobus controlled, it also has all the additional functions. There are also options to assign functions to the tractor joystick. This is known as AUX-N. With AUX-N you can for example use the tractor joystick to control the boom, but also to switch the pump on and off. If there is no tractor joystick, a sprayer joystick is provided. The symbols are designed for this sprayer and represent 22 functions for full control of the sprayer without having to manually do this on the terminal. If the tractor is not Isobus capable, a Isobus upgrade kit can be ordered so that any type of tractor can control this sprayer. The sprayer comes as standard with a rigid axle or with the steering axle as an option. The axle is always flange mounted to the single beam chassis. 
This has the advantage that the axle does not protrude downwards and does not cause crop damage and this gives us the 85 cm of ground clearance. With both axles we can have the track widths of 1.8 meters, 2 meters or 2.25 meters to accommodate for any type of crop. We now come to the steering axle. The OptiSteer steering axle has a steering angle of above 30 degrees. This 30 degrees is mainly down to the fact that the steering angle is the chassis even with 2.05 meters tires. The steering cylinder is fitted behind the axle, so preventing damage to the cylinder. But the steering system is smart and I'll explain that to you now. The smart OptiSteer steering system knows exactly where the connection point is on the tractor. That allows us to specify a dimension from connection point to the middle of the tractor's rear axle. Using this dimension and this sensor we can measure the angle from tractor to sprayer and therefore calculate the radius of the tractor's rear axle. Together with the radius and speed, the sprayer knows when it needs to steer and at which angle. In order that it can drive within the rear axle track of the tractor and so keep crop damage to an absolute minimum. This is how OptiSteer steering works. Now we move to the filling station. The filling station has a door into which stowage compartments are integrated. These have rubber seals and are therefore protected against dust and water. Protective clothing can be stowed there as well as measuring cups. The measuring cup fits here into the preparation table. This allows you to pour in the spray product without the risk of the measuring cup falling over. A soap dispenser is integrated in the door as well as clean water to wash your hands and with this you're clean when you get into the cap. The next stop is the induction hopper. The induction hopper has 60 liters volume and has a capacity of 200 liters per minute or 33 kilograms per minute of dry material. The surface is completely smooth for easy cleaning. How do we clean the induction hopper? By using this diffuser. We close the flap, open the tap and then the induction hopper is cleaned. Small details are important here. For example, the water which is trapped in the flap runs down and drips back into the induction hopper. This keeps the operating environment clean. The filling of the machine is controlled using buttons, which can also be operated wearing gloves. These work as follows. You determine from where the water needs to be drawn, going through the pump and in which direction the product is guided. Either from the tank, from the clean water tank or from outside from the intake site. I can then switch the pump on here. There are five different speeds to choose from to give me enough time to pour the spray product in. The destination can then be controlled by the push of a button, either towards the tank or directly into the boom, and cleaning of the tank from inside. This is how we control the induction hopper filling. We add water to the induction hopper to mix the product directly with clean water. These are the controls for outside cleaning. The rear hose that we use can be found at the rear of the machine. The electric 5-way valve has the huge advantage that the spraying process and cleaning process can be started from the cap. So there is no need to get out of the cap to switch from spraying to cleaning. Everything is controlled from the cap to protect the operator when working in the fields. Then we come to the 3 inches intake connection. We can use this to fill the machine very efficiently. A check valve is also integrated to prevent the risk of liquid running back into the hose. This valve can be used to pump the liquid left over in the tank back into an external vessel. 
This valve can be used to pump the liquid left over in the tank back into an external vessel. Clean water is filled via this connection into both the front and the rear tank. On the left of this we find the standard pressure filter. Pressure filter is 80 mesh. The spray liquid which we pump to the boom always passes through this filter. No additional filters are therefore needed at the back on the boom. The control station has an additional function which allows me to specify how far I want to fill the tank and so I don't have to stand here after pouring the liquid in. The machine is filled exactly up to the specified quantity and then stops as soon as the quantity is reached. This is how you fill this machine. Centrifugal pumps are always fitted into fent plant protection equipment. The centrifugal pump is fitted here at the bottom directly next to the taps, so that water is available directly at the pump. The pumps come in two different models, one model as standard and in stainless steel as an option. The stainless steel variant is used if you often work with liquid fertilizer. I'll just show you the pump in a little more detail. The stainless steel variant is shown here. The pump is driven by a hydraulic motor. The hydraulic motor ensures that the pump will turn quicker as soon as the sprayer accelerates. The pump turns slower when the sprayer decelerates. This ensures highly precise application. That can only be done if there is a direct connection to the pump. So what does the pump look like from inside? It contains little more than this flywheel. This flywheel turns quicker or slower and this is how we increase or decrease the amount of water going to the boom. As you know, the centrifugal pump itself cannot create a negative pressure. So we use a self-priming unit. This can be seen here. To explain this more clearly, we use an animation. The water flows from the spa, the self-priming adapter, to the pump and from the pump to the spa. Air is removed from the suction hose. The air and water are separated in the spa. As soon as the water gets to the pump through the suction hose, the pump pressure increases. When the pump pressure reaches a certain level, the spa suction unit turns off. The tank is now filled. The liquid goes directly into the boom from the pressure side of the pump. A flow rate sensor is fitted in the middle. A flow rate sensor indicates whether the pump should turn quicker or slower depending on the drive speed and the specified application quantity. We therefore have no mechanical parts which could negatively affect the application precision in any way. This ensures the most precise application possible in spraying equipment today. The liquid comes to the center frame from the pump through the flow meter. From here, the product is distributed to the left and right boom. If spraying is switched off, for example on headlands, the circulation is activated and the product returns to the tank via this hose.
Every section of this boom is filled from both sides. The water comes in from this pipe and from the other side. This means there is no pressure loss from one nozzle to the next. So the nozzle pressure is always 100% equal across the entire boom from left to right. The nozzles are also on a single nozzle circuit, which you can see clearly on this part here. This is a single nozzle circuit going nozzle by nozzle. This nozzle circuit also gives us a circulation system, so when the spraying process is switched off, the circulation starts up and the pesticide flows through this inch tube back into the tank. This is the boom's lift arm. The boom's lift arm is fitted in front of the axle. This prevents machine vibrations and movements from being transferred into the boom, meaning that we need less shock absorption in the boom, as the boom is kept stable by the lift arm. As the boom lift arm is so long, we also have parallel movements up and down, and the application precision is not affected. From the boom lift arm, we move now to the center frame. The boom is attached to the center frame on the left and right. The center frame is connected to the lift arm in the top. The damping happens in the lower section. As you can see here, shock absorbing is controlled via these arms and the boom is kept stable during driving. The Rogator 300 series comes with an aluminium boom as standard. Aluminium because it is light and very stable and it won't rust from contact with the spray product. This boom is trapezium shaped, narrow at the top and wide at the bottom. We use different kinds of pipe to get the complete boom 100% stable. And so it lies completely flat above the crop even at high capacities. These are the nozzle holders which are installed in the lower part of the boom where they are completely protected at the front and the back so they won't break. You can adjust the height of these nozzle holders so that longer nozzles are protected and won't snap when they hit the crop. You can also set the boom at a positive or negative angle over this cylinder so that it can follow the crop perfectly under any conditions. The Optisonic Boom Height Guide is an optional extra that comes with either three or five sensors. On the boom there are blue LED lights to illuminate the nozzles, they are just here. There is a large door on the right hand side of the machine. Behind this door there is a large stowage compartment. I'll show you that now. Here you can see that the stowage compartment has a volume of more than 500 liters. In the front section on the right hand side there is another stowage compartment for small tools and parts, for example for spare nozzles. All this allows you to leave as much as possible on the sprayer and not have to take everything with you into the cab. It also helps keep the operator's seat clean. We have two hose reels on the back of the machine. One is for outside cleaning with a maximum pressure of 9 bar, which the pump generates, and one for a compressed air gun to be able to clean even blocked diffusers directly.